ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते and please switch on your phone, out your phone, huh? Shri Bhagavan Vacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Svabhavo Atyatmam Uchyate Uta Bhavodpava Karo, Visarga, Karma, Samkita, Shri Bhagavan Vacha, Aksharam Brahma Paramam, Aksharam Brahma Paramam, Svabhavot Yatma Muchyate, Svabhavot Yatma Muchyate, Uta Pavot Pavakaro Uta Pavot Pavakaro Visarga Karma Samgitaha Visarga Karma Samgitaha Shri Bhagavan Vacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Svabhavo Dhyatma Muchate Bhuta Bhavot Bhavakaro Visarga Karma Sangitaha Sri Bhagavan Vacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Svabhavo Dhyatma Muchate Uta Bhavo Dhyatma Karo Shri Bhagavan Vacha Uta Bhavo Shri Bhagavan Vacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Svabhavo Dhyatma Muchate Puta Bhavo Dhyatma Karo Sarga Karma Samgita Mataji Shri Bhagavan Vacha Shri Bhagavan Vacha Bhavo Dhyatma Muchate Uta Bhavo Bhavo Karo Visarga Karma Samgita Shri Bhagavan Vacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Svabhavo Dhyatma Muchate Shri Bhagavan Vacha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Aksharam, indestructible, uh, Brahma, Brahman, Aramam, transcendental, Svabhava, eternal nature, Atyatmam, the self, Uchyate, is called Uttabhava Utbhava Kara 
producing the material bodies of the living entities. Visarga, creation. Karma, fruitive activities. Samgitaha is called. Translation Purport by His Divine Grace, Sila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. The Supreme Personality of God had said, the, the in this drop, uh, I will write, uh, Ruski, you get it all together? Huh? Those who all understand Russian only, you go over there. The Supreme Personality of God had said, the indestructible transcendental living entity is called Brahman, and the eternal nature is called Adyatma, the Self. Action pertaining to the development of the material bodies of the living entities is called karma or fruitive activities. Purport. Brahman is indestructible and eternally existing, and its con constitution is not changed at any time. But beyond Brahman, there is Parabrahman. Brahman refers to the living entity, and Parabrahman refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The constitutional position of the living entity is different from the position he takes in the material world. In the material consciousness, his nature is to try to be the lord of matter, but in spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness, his position is to serve the Supreme. When the living entity is in material consciousness, he has to take on various bodies in the material world. That is called karma, or varied creation by the force of material consciousness. In Vedic literature, the living entity is called Jivatma and Brahman, but he is never called Parabrahman. The living entity, a Jivatma, takes different positions. Sometimes he merges into the dark material nature and identifies himself with matter, and sometimes he identifies himself with the superior spiritual nature. Therefore, he is called the Supreme Lord's marginal energy. According to his uh, identification with material or spiritual nature, he receives a material or spiritual body. In material nature, he may take the body from any of the 8,400,000 species of life, but in spiritual nature, he has only one body. In material nature, he is manifested sometimes as a man, demigod, animal, beast, bird, etc., according to his karma. To attain material heavenly planets and to enjoy their facilities, he sometimes performs sacrifices, yagya. But when his merit is exhausted, he returns to earth again in the form of a man. This process is called karma. <coughs> the Chandogya Upanishad describes the Vedic sacrifi sacrificial process. On the sacrificial altar, five kinds of offerings are made into five kinds of fire. The five kinds of fire are conceived of as the heavenly planets, the clouds, the earth, man and woman. And the five kinds of sacrificial offerings are fate, the enjoyer of the moon, rain, grains and semen. In the process of sacrifice, the living entity makes specific sacrifices to attain specific heavenly planets and consequently reaches them. <coughs> When the merit of sacrifice is exhausted, the living entity descends to earth in the form of rain, then takes on the form of grains, and the grains are eaten by man and transformed into semen, which impregnates a woman, and thus the living entity once again attains the human form to perform sacrifice and to repeat the same cycle. In this way, the living entity repeatedly uh, perpetually comes and goes on the material path. The Krishna conscious person, however, avoids such sacrifices. He takes directly to Krishna consciousness and thereby prepares himself to return to Godhead. Imper <coughs> Impersonalist commentators on the Bhagavad Gita unreasonably assume that Brahman takes the form of Jiva in the material world. <coughs> And to substantiate this, they refer to chapter 15, verse 7 <coughs> of the Gita. But in this verse, the Lord also speaks of the living entity <coughs> as an eternal fragment of myself.
<coughs> the fragment of God, the living entity, may fall down into the material world, but the Supreme Lord, Ajuta, never falls down. Therefore, this assumption that the Supreme Brahman assumes the form of Jiva is not acceptable. It is important to remember that in Vedic literature, Brahman, the living entity, is distinguished from Parabrahman, the Supreme Lord. Shri okay. Bhagavan <coughs> Vacha Aksharam Brahma Paramam Svabhavo Dhyatmam Ujjate Bhuta Bhavot Bhava Karo Visarga Karma Samgitaha <coughs> the Supreme Personality of God had said, the indestructible, transcendental living entity is called Brahman, and his eternal nature is called Adhyatma, the Self, action per pertaining to the development to the material bodies of the living entities is called Karma, or fruitive activities. Oma kya timaranya sya genanchana salakyam chakshurun ilitam yena tasma shi guravena maha si chaitanya maro pistam stapitam yena bhutale svayam rupa kadamayam dadati sva vadanti kam mukam karoti vachalam pangum langai tigrim yat kripatam maham bande shi gurum dinataranam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> So here uh, Krishna um, answers or replies to the six or respectively seven questions by Arjuna in the previous uh, chapter in the end of the seventh chapter. Uh, Arjuna had seven questions. Uh, what, what is Brahman? What is Svabhava? What, what is uh, Karma? What is uh, Adidaiva? What is Adhyatma? What is Adiyagya and what is uh, uh, how, how the living entity or the yogi in the time of death attains the highest destination? And that Krishna describes the two paths, the one given by the, by the yogi, by the perfect yogi, and the one by the imperfect yogi. And then uh, that means karma, mish, uh, yoga, mishra, bhakti and the other one, in the end, the devotee who attains the supreme destination by pure devotional service, uh, by pure bhakti. So this is, these are the seven questions. And Krishna now, in short, Krishna doesn't have to give uh, big explanations in very short. Uh, he can uh, give the proper understanding uh, in seed form. Uh, because Arjuna was not foolish, he was already uh, educated, so he had to, did, he had, Krishna didn't have to explain him ABC, everything, uh, all big, huge purports. For us in Kali Yuga, we need purports, but for Arjuna and for other perfected living entities or devotees, associates, eternal associates of Krishna, like Uddhava, Arjuna, like that, don't need huge purports. So that's already, in short, Krishna can describe the essence of, on the question of Arjuna. Uh, Arjuna is Krishna's friend. Uh, as such, he's on the same level with Krishna. Friendship, it's uh, on same attitude, same mutual affection and friendship. Uh, and so therefore, uh, sometimes <coughs> one thinks, yeah, Arjuna should also know everything, as Krishna knows everything. But because Arjuna puts himself in the inferior position or dependent position, in this case, that Krishna could speak Bhagavad Gita, 
Um, so uh, he addresses the the Lord in the beginning of the of the first verse of the eighth chapter as uh, Purushottama, uh, the Supreme. Uh, I'm Anu. I'm dependent on you. I'm in ignorance. Please instruct me. I'm your disciple. I'm your Shishya. I already pointed out this before. Because without becoming Shishya, without becoming disciple, that means we become subordinate to the teacher or to the Supreme Lord, respectively, or his representative, who is as good as the Lord because he represents the Lord's words without deviation, without speculating, without my opinion, without adding anything, by, uh, without distracting anything. Therefore, he's as good as the Lord. And we give the respect. So we subordinate ourselves. Upanishad, or Gita Upanishad also, is an Upanishad. Means uh, we are approaching the Lord, in a, becoming close to him, and become attentively listening from him. It's called Shruti. Therefore, the perfect process of uh, learning is transmitted by Shruti, through hearing from the highest authority, from Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, uh, not an ordinary person is speaking here, so the Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Sri Bhagavan is already described, defined in various Puranas. It points out the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who all possesses all six opulences. And one of those six opulences is that he knows everything, the past, the present, and the future. Veda Ham Samadhityani, also Krishna point. I know everything in the past, the present, and future. You don't know because you forget. We have tendency to forget. We have, although we have previous lifetimes behind us, many, many lifetimes we have behind us, but we cannot remember, we forget. Uh, and now we are in this lifetime, even in this lifetime we forget so many things in the past. Not to speak, after this body we, we leave, uh, we enter a new body, then again we forget what happened in this life. This, now, now this life seems to be very important to us, but we already had so many important lives, what we considered important. But this life is really uh, important now because we attain the human form of life because it's very rarely attained. Uh, it's pointed out in Bhagavatam by Prahlad Maharaj, so it's very ra rarely attained. Therefore, one should use this uh, human form of life not to ask foolish questions, how to eat, how to sleep, how to defend, and how to uh, have a nice sense gratification, but to ask questions about Brahman. Uh, Atata Brahma Chikyasa, therefore Vedanta Sutra starts with Atata Brahma Chikyasa. Now we attain the human form of life, so now you should uh, find, uh, figure out what is Brahman. So, and Arjuna, he was uh, very, he understood, but, uh, he was very curious. He wanted to uh, uh, get from Krishna the clarification, what is actually Brahma? Because amongst the scholars or sages, there are different opinions according to personalists and impersonalists. The personalist understands Brahma. Brahman is, the, is the ultimately uh, that what is not, not perishable, it is eternal. It is sat, it has no beginning, has no end. It is all penetrating, it's everywhere. <coughs> Uh, it is indestructible, it is full, full of light. Uh, so that's the general understanding of pra definition of Brahman. <coughs> but uh, if, the pra if you analyze Brahman, then there are uh, Parabrahman, as Prabhupada is pointing out in several places already. In the purport, Parabrahman means then the Supreme Lord. The living entity is also Brahman, because it's a part and parcel of the Lord, as described in the 15th chapter, text 7. Prabhupada pointing out in the purport, Jiva, Lok, Jiva Bhuta Sanatana, uh, that, uh, that is, uh, mama, uh, that is uh, living entities, uh, the marginal energy, are uh, the parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, the emanating from him. And therefore, the impersonalist, 
or those who have not uh, properly heard from the Mahachanas or from the authorized scriptures, they speculate and, and they equate you know, the, the living entity who is also Brahman with the Supreme Brahman, Parabrahman. So they say everything is the same. Ultimately, now we are conditioned, but ultimately we become unconditioned. But Krishna is also pointing out that actually the Lord, even if he comes to the material world, he is never conditioned. He is always uh, Achyuta. That means he is never Chuta, never um, failable. There are two kinds of living entities, the Achyutas and the, and the Chutas. That means the Lord and all his uh, eternal associates in the spiritual world are in the liberated position. They are always Achyuta, they are infallible. But the living entity who comes in contact with the dark material nature, Prabhupada is pointing out the dark, the dark material nature. Sometimes the Maya is described as dark. It's black, it's Kali. Kali, uh, Devi, she is black, she is a uh, shadow, Jaya, Jaya Devi, huh? she, is, uh, she has, he has a blackish body, so the material nature is very dark, very blackish, uh, and only because the Brahman, the spiritual energy of uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Mahapurusha, is entering in this uh, material, in this dark material nature, light or life appears. Prakriti has no life in <laughs> itself. The life is the coming from the Brahman, from the Supreme Brahman and the, his uh, part and parcels who are emanating in every species of life. Huh? Emanating or all-pervading means the living entity is all-pervading. It doesn't mean that one living entity pervades the whole universe. No, that the all, uh, uh, unlimited jivas, jivatmas, they are all over the three worlds, uh, in the different species of life, 8,400,000 prototypes of uh, species of life are existing. That, that's uh, that's uh, everywhere given in, this, in the Vedic scriptures. And the living entities are entering in, in, the, in these uh, different uh, species of life according to their past karma. And especially the human form of life is only attained by many, many lifetimes of ultimately good karma, good activities when it comes to the human platform. The human form is described like a boat. Huh? And the spiritual master is the captain on the boat, and the material world is like an ocean of birth and death, samsara. So we, have, we are here in this samsara, ocean of birth and death, and uh, we have the boat, we have the human form of life, we have the captain, the spiritual master. Huh? But then we also need the favorable wind. Uh, we need a favorable wind, and, and the favorable wind, even if you have a, a good boat, unsinkable boat, and even if you have a good captain, if the, fa if the wind is very unfavorable, uh, there will be, can be complete destruction. Uh, so we need the favor of the Supreme Lord, his instructions. The first Supreme Lord is the Supreme Spiritual Master. No Spiritual Master can say, it is my opinion, <coughs> this is my knowledge. I just can repeat the, the knowledge given or revealed by the Lord through, through Guru Parampara. And that way makes one an authorized spiritual master. Uh, and uh, is able then to guide others to, that they, for, that, that, for, that they also, other living entities can make spiritual progress towards uh, attaining love to Krishna and ultimately going uh, to, uh, back to his lotus feet and become recognized and established as an eternal servant. And that's actually our Svabhav. Huh? Because uh, Brahman is, has double definition. 
Huh? Can be the Lord, can be the Jiva. So the Arjuna wanted to know what is Brahman? What do you mean with Brahman? Because Krishna already uh, used these uh, six uh, terms, or I would say words, and, but he didn't uh, define it. But then uh, Arjuna, who was an attentive listener, so he grasped these words and wanted to now exactly know from Krishna what is what. Can you tell me what, is, what do you mean with Brahman? Is Brahman the Supreme Lord? Is Brahman the material nature? Is Brahman the living entity? So and then here Krishna is pointing out, with Brahman I mean the living entity. It's not the Parabrahman. Parabrahman remains always Parabrahman, even if it comes to the material spheres. He never becomes t attached, or how say, polluted by the dark shadow of the material energy. But the Brahman, who is covered, becomes, has tendency to become covered of, by ignorance, forgetting the Lord, huh? and then coming deeper, falling deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in material existence. Huh? And it cannot come out on his own effort. Uh, not possible. Therefore, the merciful Lord uh, uh, gave us the Sattvika Samhita, the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita, uh, who are uh, who shedding the light in this dark, uh, in this dark material world to enlighten the living entities from within the heart. So by nature we are Brahman, and therefore if we are coming in contact with the light of the Lord, or with the knowledge, shed, shedding the merciful light of the Lord in the form of knowledge, the, the living entity immediately becomes enlightened, uh, because that's his nature. Uh, of course, if a living entity is very deeply fallen and covered by consciousness, because there are five kinds of consciousnesses, levels, uh, completely covered, li a little less covered, then sprouted, like a plant, you know, coming from seed, then sp gradually sprouts, then uh, <coughs> blossoms, and then fully blossoms, grows, blossoming like that. And the fully blossom stage, you know, it's the full Krishna consciousness. Uh, but the shrink stages, you know, it's the levels like animals and plants, where we have no opportunity to uh, fully understand and grasp uh, Krishna consciousness. So the, the process of uh, hearing about Krishna, Srinatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana, gives us an opportunity to become purified. Uh, as Krishna describes in the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, that uh, my devotees he, like, like to come together to hear and to chant about me, and in this way they become enlightened. And I'm within the heart, Tesham eva no kampartam, ahamma jnana cham tama, nashayami atma bhavasto, jnana tipena basvata. I'm giving the light so that they can understand me. And the dadami buddhi yogam tam, I'm giving them the intelligence how they can come to me. The dadami buddhi yogam tam, yenamam upayanti te. So without that, the, the sun, merciful the sun, the merciful Son of the Lord appears, of the trans giving us transcendental knowledge. Uh, we cannot come to knowledge, and we cannot ultimately come to realization either. Uh, so we need first knowledge, and then we have to deepen ourselves in that knowledge, not just read and fall asleep, or come to classes and, and, and become un unattentive. The classes and the reading, the knowledge that we receive, you know, should, should, we, we should hear and then start to contemplate and, and, uh, and think about it and discuss it amongst each other uh, and think over. And if you have a doubt, like Arjuna, ask questions to clarify the doubt so that we can go without obstacle deeper and deeper in the ocean of this uh, transcendental Bhakti ocean. Yeah. Don't be satisfied just to be on the, on the shore side of the ocean. Don't be satisfied to be on the, on the surface of the ocean, going with the waves up and downs, yeah. because there is sometimes fear still there. Yeah. If you are on, on the side of the ocean, you, can, you think, oh, I know the ocean, because you touch it with your toe. But you are not sure, should I enter or should not? Maybe it's too cold, especially uh, people in Adria. 
or uh, who live on the seaside, uh, they rarely go to the sea, although they live ne next to the sea, because it's always uh, not, not warm enough. Uh, that's the miracle. Uh, for tourists who come there, they can go at any time. But the, in, the inhabitants who, who live on the seashore side, is it not like that? Uh, they very rarely go. They have always good check. Say, is, is it warm enough? Uh, and the, mirac the mi miracle is the illusion what they have. We know this ocean very nicely. Uh, but they never enter. Many of the people who live on the ocean side, they never, although they have opportunity to, to go enter every day and take a bath in the ocean, they never go. Because they have so many things to do with their house, uh, with their family, eating problem, or eating, buying something, uh, going to the bank, uh, always doing, always busily doing, and day, day and night they have no time to enjoy the ocean. They also have no interest. Because I think we live here on the ocean side. That's, that's, I'm satisfied. That's all. That's enough. Yeah. But we, sh uh, we should not, in the same way, we should not just be satisfied to to to, to live uh, on the threshold to the ocean of bhakti. Yeah. We should not be satisfied to just stay on the ocean side and watch the ocean of bhakti. Yeah. And just hear about it and say, oh, it's, oh, it's very nice, but I don't, I don't enter. Uh, uh, why we don't enter? Why we don't want to enter? Uh, because we have uh, maybe still some fear. We still have a little skeptic. Is this ocean really much better than the land where I am? Uh, is it really that what, I, what, I, uh, what in, improves my life, what the scripture is saying? Uh, so doubt is the demon was keeping us back. Uh, we have no faith. Uh, and without Shraddha, without uh, faith, and without uh, Sadhu Sangha, we cannot engage in Bhajana Kriya, and then ultimately we cannot become free of Anartha, and therefore we cannot become absorbed in Nishna, that means in fixed faith, in fixed ter ter determination in, ser in service to Krishna or in Bhakti. And if we are not there, you know, we can forget you know, everything else you know, to attain, go deeper in the ocean of bhakti uh, and to attain ultimately, um, uh, how we say, ashakti, ruchi, bhava and prema. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a, it, we have to start with the, with, the, with the shraddha and with the devotees who have the shraddha. That's stated by Lord Chaitanya in the teachings of uh, Sanatana Goswami. You know, he, he, may, he emphasized the point of how important it is, is to cultivate Shraddha in the association of devotees who have Shraddha. Shraddha not in materialistic lifestyle, like if you like to have become successful businessman, you, 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 uh, you associate and go to seminars and pay a lot of money. Uh, to learn the art, you know how to sell, to make good business. So th that th this businessman give you a faith, knowledge, all the tools, every all the information, how you become successful businessman or banker or whatever. And same thing we have to do in spiritual life to 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 associate with experts and going deeper and deeper in this uh, process of uh, bhakti yoga. Uh? So no, it's not the just theory. We have to go further and further. Otherwise, we always stay in ABC, in primary school. Uh, we have to go deeper and deeper in this process. At least be open for it. Krishna will reveal. He will change our heart. We cannot change our own heart. Uh, Krishna can, will change by his mercy. Uh, in the, if you see, if Krishna sees that we are, have nice up attitude, humble attitude, service attitude in the association of devotees, appreciating devotees, uh, not being envious with devotees, appreciating them, respecting them, and hearing from them, learning from them, and serving with them. Sri Vikraha Radhana Nityanana Shingaratanma the Spiritual Master is very happy if we are following his footsteps and assisting him 
in serving him as he is doing, and uh, serving Sri Vigraha in various ways to please them. Uh, so we, we should also engage and assisting in the service of the spiritual master uh, that we also can uh, engage in devotional service uh, to the Lord. By Kirtan, by Archanam, by Vandanam, uh, by uh, meditation, going deeper in the devotional service. That's all attained by Guru Seva. Service to Guru, service to the Vaishnavas uh, who have faith in Guru and Krishna. Yasya Devi Parabhakti Yatha Devi Yatha Gurau. Only by having simultaneous faith in Krishna and in Guru, all the secrets, secrets of Vedic knowledge will be revealed. If we only have faith in Krishna, not in Guru, Krishna says, who, he who claims himself my devotee is not my devotee. Only the devotee of my devotee is my real devotee. He tells to Arjuna in Adi Purana. And if we only have a guru's uh, faith and not in Krishna, that's also not so sure. Uh, uh, because we cannot attain Krishna without Vaishnava, with guru, without guru, not possible. Uh, because guru is the merciful cloud, uh, samsara, dava, nala, nida, loka. Uh, so he is the merciful cloud appearing above the forest fire of material existence, the samsara. Uh, and only if this cloud is appearing, the uh, fire of material world, lust, greed, anger, uh, false illusions, false, false goals will become destroyed, will become completely extinguished. Uh, that, is, that is the only possible when the merciful cloud of Shri Guru appears in our life, uh, then all this uh, samsara will have an end. As long as we are in karma, samsara, uh, and here karma, the word karma is used. Karma can mean action and reaction, but in this term Krishna explains karma means actually uh, pious activities, fruitive activities described in the Vedic literatures to elevate what makes the living entity able to reach the higher planets, higher worlds of uh, Svarga Loka by by fo following the five five kinds of karmas, this ka uh, uh, karma, uh, how we say, uh, rituals of uh, yagya described in the Vedic literatures. Uh. But in the age of Kali, these yagyas are not recommended, as we also heard. In the age of Kali, uh, only Sankhityan yagya, the glorification of Krishna, uh, together with devotees. Uh, uh, will, be, will become effective. Uh. So if we are in the association of devotees and chanting the holy name, absorbing in these transcendental literatures and discussing it, we're not reading it or hearing it, theoretically we also discuss it and try to go deeper in it and also in practice, uh, then we can gradually uh, overcome our uh, uh, I would say, uh, doubt and our uh, hesitation to enter in the ocean. And not only in the service, because service is also, also fearful. It has uh, many heavy waves and ups and downs. Uh, sometimes we are feeling good, sometimes not so good in bhakti. Sometimes we are afraid because there are many sharks of the different philosophical theories were appearing, you know, and they're also creating fears and uh, anxieties in you atheistic views of life, uh, but if you enter it, then you see the paradise of the ocean of bhakti. Even in the material world, the ocean is very beautiful. We see sometimes pictures. Uh, but in the bhakti, bhakti yoga, the bhakti ocean becomes very beautiful, very ecstatic, if you're entering it deeply. Uh, and it, it, uh, therefore Krishna explains, the living entity has to understand I'm Brahman, I'm not the body, because only if uh, we understand that we are spirit, that we are eternal, then we can go in contact with the eternal. Uh, as long as we are afraid, we are losing something, I'm this body, I'm not eternal, uh, I'm the enjoyer, 
No? I'm man, I'm woman, I'm good, I'm bad, I'm beautiful, I'm ugly, I'm learned, I'm not so learned, I'm foolish, no? and so on and so on. I'm go from good bird, I'm from bad bird, I'm from low class, I'm high class. No? Then we cannot enter in the ocean because we have bodily concept of life, we are on false ego. No? And then, we, because we cannot only enter in the bhakti, bhakti ocean, uh, if we understand, I'm Brahman, I'm eternal, I'm Chivirasvarupoy uh, Krishnera Nitidas. I'm really eternal, a spirit soul, I'm Brahman, but not para Brahman. And my eternal relation uh, and happiness is ultimately if I if I coming in contact with the supreme Brahman who is a person too. I am a person and the Supreme Lord is a person. In the past, in the present, in the future, eternally, we are persons. We are never unperson. No? We forgot it because we are in ignorance, we are in Maya, we are in the darkness of Maya, Maya of Kali. This is the world, world of, of Durga, of Kali. To keep you in ignorance, to keep you on the bodily concept of life to give you the illusion, you are enjoyer. And as long as we have this conception, we cannot enter in the Bhakti ocean. No? Therefore, we have to first realize, Aham Brahmasmi, Atata Brahma Chikyasa, Aham Brahmasmi, I am the I'm eternal spirit soul. No? And the spirit never, Nahanyati Hanimani Shari Re, he never goes, he never dies, no? also never takes birth. Never gets old, never gets diseased. No. Material body goes through all these changes of body, as we discussed last Monday. Uh, we go through these changes, six changes of body. Uh, taking birth, growing, becoming educated, uh, getting some offsprings, uh, becoming adult offsprings, getting a job, byproducts. Uh, and then becoming old, diseased, and then finally dead. And this is again and again. All over the all the species of life go through these uh, changes. Uh, foolish scientists. Uh, I just read today. You know, now in, in Switzerland, there's uh, uh, some far, far, pharmaceutical. Uh, industry makes uh, propaganda now. We make. Uh, we are. Uh, we are uh, we are now working on a medicine or, or some uh, way that the people will become 125 years old. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but what they will do if you become 125 years old and stay full, <laughs> not using your time properly, you know, just wear, work like an ass. Because now anyway, rent to going in rent, you know, is postponed later and later. Huh? For men 65, now they want to put in 67. If you become one, 125 years old, then you have to work up to 100. <laughs> Very good for economy. <laughs> and hopefully you die, die earlier, you know, that, that, that because then... In little time, what time? There's a meeting, but it's not written by him. anyway. So if the meeting starts, you let us know, then we stop. Uh, so <coughs> then, uh, then you don't, they don't have to pay your rent. So the state, no, they keep it for themselves. They don't have to pay it out. So what's the use if you become 200, 500, 1,000 years old? If you are keep, if you stay in ignorance, even if you live eternal, uh, if you uh, can imagine to live eternally, you know, in ignorance, uh, working on construction site, you know, building houses, <laughs> and you have to see how to fall, how they will fall apart, that you can build them up again and again. Uh, this this is the big illusion we are in it. So we want, there was one sage. He, li he, li he lived for many, for many uh, yuga avatars, uh, no, no, manvantars, for many manvantars, for, uh, I think about five or six, you know. Uh, 
But then when they ask him, you know, uh, uh, about uh, test, uh, about the life and end of life, you know, so all life is very short. Uh, life is very short. Even if you live many manvantars, you know, millions and millions of years, this this uh, sage was living, you know, so it, life is very short, you know. Uh, even in this time, because if you have uh, even ma many uh, manvantars time for self-realization, if you don't have the mercy of the Lord, uh, you will not make any 14 manvantars by coming back to Godhead. If, even if you remain alive in the same body, not possible. Uh, but now in this age we have the great mercy, Lord Chaitanya. Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita. He gave us the complete knowledge of uh, himself, about bhakti process, how to attain it, what is karma, uh, what, uh, what is the soul, what is devotional service, uh, what is the time factor. So he gave us these five uh, main topics of knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. Therefore Bhagavad Gita is considered the, the main book in the age of Kali. I found uh, yesterday, I, I want to read to you a nice uh, sloka from Narada Pancharatra. Therefore, I'll take this machine with me today that I have the quote here. Uh, for, it is from Balakrishna Bala Sahasranam. There are uh, thousand names of uh, Bal Krishna, the boy Krishna. So, and uh, it's a very nice statement here from Narada Pancharatra. Uh, Namna Sahasram Paramam Srinu Devi uh, Samasataha. Shrutvashi Bala Krishna Sya Namna Sahasra Kam Priye Vyapaiti Sarva Papani Brahma Hatyadi Kani Cha Kalau Baleshvaro Deva Kalau Vrindavanam Vanam Kalau Ganga Mukti Datri Kalau Gita Paragati Nasti Yagyadi Karyani Hare Namai Hare Nameva Kevalam Kalau Vimuktae Nrinam Nasti Eva Katir Anyataha Spoken by Shiva. <coughs> Shiva to Parvati. All, all are waiting. Huh? All are waiting to stop. It. So the meeting will start now? Okay, I'll start. I only read this and then you can start. Okay. Then I will continue next Monday. O oh Devi, please hear of all these thousand names. O oh beloved one, uh, these uh, thousand names of Shri Baal Krishna are heard, are heard, then the sin of killing a Brahmana and all other sins as well will perish. In Kali Yuga, Baal Krishna, that means Krishna is the, de the deity. In Kali Yuga, Vrindavan is the forest to engage in devotional service. In Kali Yuga, the Ganga is the giver of liberation. In Kali Yuga, the Gita is the supreme song. The Vedic sacrifices are not to be performed in Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, only the chanting of Shri Hari, of Shri Hari's holy name, gives liberation. There is no other way. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So sorry, I have to uh, stop. Then nobody told me that there is a meeting. Meeting now. So, but we can. Uh, Bhagavad Gita is eternal. We can anyway, it's like an ocean, only touching a drop or not, not even that, and then uh, it's always going on, it's always new and fresh. So we can always recite further and speak about it and, and try to grasp the spirit and the mercy of Lord Krishna, and like Arjuna did. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sila, Sila Prabhupada. Kicha.